Kyle Mohan Racing. Today we are talking about the FD3S 93-95 to Mazda RX-7 rotor. Um, you know, in the U.S., this was only available from 93 to 95, but it was continued up to 99 in the FD3Ss in Japan, and Mazda still does make this rotor. So we're going to talk about how to identify it and what made it unique. In the Mazda rotary lineup, um, this would be a 2 millimeter apex seal rotor. It also is a low compression rotor from the factory, coming in at 9 to 1 compression, um, comparatively speaking to the higher compression of the Mazda RX-8, which came in at 10 to 1, or previous generations like the Series 4 naturally aspirated rotor coming in at 9.4 to 1. So as Mazda added more boost, um, made more horsepower, and continued to put these motors into day-to-day -day cars, they were compensating with compression ratio change through the different generations, and they also changed specifications and weights. So the weight of the FD3S rotor is one of the lighter factory rotors up until you got to the RX-8 rotors. Um, generally coming in at about 9.5 pounds, but the modern cast rotors come in slightly lighter. They, Mazda changed the way they did their casting, so if you try to match a actual 93 to 95 rotor um, with a brand new off-the-shelf rotor, even if it's got the identification stamp, which we're going to talk about, you might end up with some discrepancies of weight. And one way to tell if you've got a early casting versus a, a late or modern casting is this little ridge right here. And, and what Mazda did was on their later casting, so this would probably be not what I would call a reproduction, but it wasn't in a factory car. It's been cast sometime recently. They actually added... A little bit of tip clearance so your gear and land area are still at the, the traditional height but uh, they actually dropped the tip down by a couple thousandths and, and generally you're always going to have about a five thousandths um, change in height between your gear and your tip from the factory uh, this just adds a little bit of uh, ability for the rotor to fluctuate and move from the factory. So as you can see on the early or original FD rotor, there was not that ridge and the uh, the whole land area here to tip area still has that five thousandths change, but they just ran the tips a little closer. And, and in a, a lot of motors, you ended up with uh, tip rub so with uh, KMR and Mazda Tricks, one of our recommendations is always uh, tip clearancing when it comes to the rotors. But uh, identification-wise, early, no change in uh, main uh, tip height, and then later casting, slight change. So uh, this will probably be a slightly lighter rotor than this. You'd have to get them balanced. Uh, regardless if you were doing rotor replacements or uh, not using your factory setup, but uh, generally I do not recommend um, trying to match a early casting with a late casting. Now when it comes to identifying the FD3S rotor, uh, one of the first things you're always going to notice is the pockets are always machined. They're not a cast pocket. A lot of your early rotors had cast pockets. So, late model rotor, um, 89 and after, all had machined pockets, and in the specific case of the FD3S, um, bear with me here, it has what I consider a square-edged pocket. They're all very, very similar, and when you get to the corners, they are radiused, kind of like if you used a penny or a nickel, but generally they're very square, and they're machined. So... If you're trying to identify an FD3S rotor compared to early or other generational rotors, square pocket machined. You can see on your 89 to 91, 
as I was saying, it's a rounder pocket. It, it's still squarish, but the FDs, when you look at them day in and day out, they're always the same, uh, uh, a little bit more squared off shape. So, easy ways to identify your FD rotors. One more neat trick is on your FD rotors, if you're in a, in a concerning situation, you can see right here, it does have a T in the casting. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to just say, based off of me being in the U.S., that that signifies it's a turbo rotor. <laughs> Anybody who actually knows, please correct me. Uh, but there you have it. FD3S rotors um, in the U.S., 93 to 95, machined pockets, fairly squared edges, 2 millimeter apex seals, approximately 9.5 pounds. And uh, when you're trying to match your rotors, always remember on the gear side of the rotor, you're going to be able to find your identification weight stamp. So this is a C. So if you were trying to pair this up, you only want to uh, use the same letter or stay within one letter. So you could potentially match this C if you were trying to to a B, C, or D rotor in the factory weight range. Castings uh, identification for turbo on the oil side. Weight identification on the gear side. Um, hopefully this helps. Uh, I always get a lot of questions about uh, identification, what year is what, um, and, and what's an easy way to tell. So uh, let me know if you have questions about other rotors. Um, I could do this for um, some of the other generations as well. But uh, this was a KMR video in the shop, dropping a little bit of rotary knowledge for the FD3S rotor. Make sure to follow, ask questions, and visit KyleMohanRacing.com.